Hey guys, what's up? This is Dr. Pavan, your surgery educator on an academy platform. And today I'm here to talk to you about the five important trials in surgery. So let us begin with the first one. Saints trial. So what do you think? Where do you get the Saints trial? Just try to recollect in your mind. Now, if you recollect that the Saints trial is something which is seen in gallbladder stones, you're absolutely correct. Okay, so what exactly is the Saints trial consisting of? So it is consisting of the gallbladder stones, yes. At the same time, you have a hiatal hernia, which you can see by this small schematic diagram which I've drawn over here. Along with this, you have the colonic diverticular. So the triad, which is consisting of gallbladder stones, along with the hiatus hernia, along with the colonic diverticulum, this consists of a same triad. Simple one-liner, just remember this. Okay, correct. Let's move on to the next thing, Bochard stride. So what do you think? Where do you get this Bochard stride? Okay, so do you get somewhere in the stomach, like right? some pathology of the stomach? Well, you're absolutely correct. This is something which you get in the gastric volvulus, okay? So where do you get this? You get this in the gastric volvulus. So what is happening in the gastric volvulus? The stomach is kind of rotating on its own axis, okay? So what is actually happening? The stomach is kind of uh, moving or kind of rotating on its own axis. So because of this, what is happening? You cannot eat food. And whenever the patient is trying to eat food, it is not going forward. So it is kind of getting stopped over there and the patient is vomiting out. So here we have got a triad, which is called as Bochard triad. What are the constituents of the Bochard triad? It consists of epigastric pain. It consists of inability to pass the nasogastric tube because if you go, try to pass the nasogastric tube, the stomach has kind of flapped over itself. You will not be able to pass the nasogastric tube beyond this point. At the same time, you will have inability to vomit. The patient will have retching, like patient is wanting to vomit out. But as soon as the patient tries to vomit out, the patient is not able to vomit out because again, the contents which are in the distal part of the intestine beyond the snapping portion of the stomach, they are not able to come through the mouth and patient is not able to vomit. So simple try it. Epigastric pain, CV epigastric pain with inability to pass the nasogastric tube along with inability to vomit. This consists of Bochard stride, which is a constituent of a gastric volvulus. Let's move on to the third one. Now you have a Meckler stride. Where do you get this? Something related to the esophagus or you know something related to the thorax or something like that? Well, yes, this is something which you get in the Boyer Heave syndrome. What is a Boyer Heave syndrome? Boyer Heave syndrome is a injury to the kind of spontaneous rupture of the esophagus. That is what you call it as a Boyer Heave syndrome. Now, how, what is happening in the Boerian syndrome? There is through and through rupture. It means that the continuity of the esophagus is lost. Okay, here the continuity of the esophagus is lost. In the kind of malady we steer, there is a longitudinal mucosal tear. That is also an injury to the esophagus. But there we get a longitudinal mucosal injury. In the Boyer Heath syndrome, what do you get? You get a through hand through rupture so that the continuity of the esophagus is lost. Now, in this, we get a triad which is called as a Meckler's triad. What are the constituents of the Meckler stride? It consists of the thoracic pain, then vomiting and the subcutaneous emphysema. Okay, so please understand, we get a thoracic pain, we get vomiting and we get subcutaneous emphysema. These are the constituents of a Meckler stride, which is a feature of a Boyer-Reeve syndrome. Now, the subcutaneous emphysema, this is important. So you need to know how exactly we come, like we can diagnose it. So let's have a look at these images. So are you able to appreciate this person? In this person, are you, are you able to appreciate the eyes of this person? They are not normal, right? The eyelids are kind of bulging. Okay, so in view of the history, you will be able to know that this is something which is a feature of subcutaneous emphysema. So what exactly is happening in the subcutaneous emphysema? The air is getting accumulated in the subcutaneous tissue. And because of this, if you go and try to palpate on this kind of skin of this particular patient, you will get crepitations. Okay, you will get crepitations. Now, okay, some people try to confuse it with peri or bital edema, but the clinical case scenario will be entirely different. Here, the person is most probably maybe a kind of a chronic alcoholic who came to you with a vomiting, with a CVF gastric pain or something like that. Or maybe patient was just subjected to a apogee endoscopy and after the procedure, the patient developed this kind of an appearance. So in view of the clinical scenario, you can definitely label this person as suffering from subcutaneous emphysema. Now, look at, have a look at this particular x-ray. So what you're able to appreciate over is that, are you able to have a look at this particular part? Now, this is the chest wall. These are the ribs and everything. And this is basically the skin. Now, they need to be closer to each other, right? If at all we try to look at, okay. So they need to be closer to each other. But what is happening in this particular image? This particular part, which is between the skin and the chest wall, that is kind of very widened. And at the same time, it is very hazy. 
So this is a clue that this person is suffering from a subcutaneous emphysema. So I hope you're able to appreciate this heterogeneous portion over here, which is consisting of the soft tissue along with the air, which is intervening in between it. So this is what is a subcutaneous emphysema. So this is an X-ray which can be showed to you. So please do remember, this is how you can appreciate subcutaneous emphysema on an X-ray. Enough of it. This is subcutaneous emphysema present in the Boerhaave syndrome consisting of the Meckler's triad. I hope you get this. Let's move on to the next one. Now, let's talk about the Regler's triad. What is this Regler's triad? Where do you get it? Something related to the gallbladder, is it? Can you remember? Well, yes, you're absolutely correct. It is present in the gallstone ileus. Now, what exactly is this gallstone ileus? Let us first have a look what is gallstone ileus. So, I hope you're able to appreciate this. This is a kind of a gallstone which is present in the gallbladder and just near it, what do you have? You have a part of intestine. Now, let's say if at all this gallstone is present for a prolonged period of time, it was present for a prolonged period of time, it can cause a pressure necrosis on the wall of the gall gallbladder. It can erode through the wall of the gallbladder. It can erode through the wall of the end of intestine and enter into the intestine. Once it enters into the intestine, it is free to travel ahead. So I hope you're able to understand it because of the chronic presence and the pressure necrosis of the wall between the gallbladder and the intestine. It has ruptured this and it has come into the intestine and now it is traveling forward. Now it is traveling forward. Now, if I just ask you, what is the narrowest part of the intestine? Okay, small intestine. What is the narrowest part of the small intestine? It is not the ileocecal valve. It is just proximal or maybe 60 centimeters proximal to the ileocecal valve. So what is going to happen? This particular stone may travel distally and may get like obstructed at that particular point. Okay, so this stone will travel distally and maybe it is kind of stuck around 60 centimeters proximal to the ileocecal valve. And this is something which will lead to intestinal obstruction. Okay, so this is something which will lead to intestinal obstruction. Now, another important thing is this intestine. It is in continuity with the mouth. So our air, which is going inside, this air will also enter into the hepatobiliary system. So this is what is called the pneumobilia. Please understand it is a very, very important triad. So I hope you understood what is a gallstone ileus and the triad which is present in the gallstone ileus, it is called the Regler's triad. What are the constituents of the regular strat? It consists of the small bowel obstruction. It consists of the pneumobilia and it consists of an ectopic gallstone. So gallstone, it is not present at the normal position, right? It is present at an ectopic position. So that is what is consisting of the gallstone ileus. I hope you're able to understand it, guys. Okay, now let us move on and let us talk about the last strat for today, which is Whipple strat. Where do you see this? Any, any, any guesses, guys? So yeah, this is something which you see in the pancreas okay this is something which you see in the pancreas this is present in insulinoma okay so in the insulinoma it is basically a tumor which is producing a lot of insulin and because of this the patient will land up into hypoglycemia now when i look at this strat i just feel that it is made just for the sake of making it because all the three things they are pointing towards the one and the same thing that is hypoglycemia what is this strat consists of it consists of serum glucose level less than 45 milligrams per deciliter Definitely, this is what you call as a hypoglycemia. And because of this, the patient develops symptoms like sweating, palpitation, all those things. So yeah, patient has the symptoms of the hypoglycemia because the patient is having hypoglycemia. And definitely, if you give the glucose to the patient, the symptoms will get relieved. Okay, so this is something kind of, they have just pulled up everything related to the hypoglycemia and made it try it. But you need to understand because you need to remember, it is a very, very common MCQ which they ask. Whipple stride is seen in, the answer is insulinoma. I'm sure you know that this is a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor where there is an excessive secretion of insulin. And because of this, you have kind of increased uh, like redu reduction in the glucose level leading to the hypoglycemia. And if at all you give glucose to the patient, the symptoms are relieved. So that's all guys. I'll just quickly recollect whatever we have read. So we have talked about the five triads today. We started with the same strat, which was present in the gallstone ileus, consisting of the gallbladder stones, hiatal hernia, and the colonic diverticula. Then we talked about the Bochard strat, which is present in the iso, like gastric volvulus. It is consisting of the severe epigastric pain, inability to pass the nasogastric tube, and inability to vomit. Lastly, then we talked about the Meckler strat, which is present in the Boerhaave syndrome, which is consisting of severe thoracic pain with a subcutaneous emphysema with vomiting. Then we talked about the regular strat, which is present in the gallstone ileus, which is consisting of the small bowel obstruction, then pneumobilia and the ectopic gallstone. Lastly, we talked about Whipple strat, which is feature of insulinoma. And yeah, what are the features of this? Serum glucose less than 45, then symptoms of hypoglycemia. And if you give glucose to the patient, patient is all okay. Okay, so this is all about the triads, which I wish to talk to you about. 
thank you so much guys for having a look at this particular thing i hope it helped you in a small tiny bit way thank you so much and yeah guys i am a educator of surgery on an academic platform and we are doing a lot of good things we are coming up with a lot of courses and our revision course is going to start in let's say august or something so there are various things happening on the platform if at all you are minutely interested into it just follow the link below go to the website and kind of have a look at all the courses if at all you want to take any of the subscriptions do consider using my promo code my promo code is tr.pavan thank you so much guys like this video and yeah follow me on an academy so that you do not miss i also conduct a lot of free classes on the unacademy platform you can follow me there also see you in the next session very very soon happy studying have a great day